I had made three videos regarding PhD program and it was received very well and since then I have been getting a lot of questions about PhD programs. So here I am answering six key questions about PhD program and PhD journey and these are very interesting questions. This is Chaitanya Sambhara, faculty at the College of Business, University of Texas, Arlington. So the first question is, why did you go for PhD in USA? And how do you compare PhD in India versus USA? Okay, so this is a very interesting question. The point is that I never even considered going for PhD in India. I decided to go for PhD after I had been in the US for almost two years. Therefore, I did not even consider, but if I had the choice to go for PhD in the US versus India, I would have definitely picked the United States. And let me explain my reasons why. See, when you are going for PhD, what you need to understand is that PhD is not just another degree like bachelor's or master's. It is a research oriented degree where you are pursuing research to become a researcher, right? In that context, you should look at whatever field you are interested in which country does the best quality work in that particular field. If let's say for the sake of argument, let's say if you are going for PhD in physics, it is possible that Germany produces the best quality research and the research papers that are published in the best journals in the world, most of them come from Germany, let's say for the sake of argument, I'm not too sure. Maybe it is US, maybe it is some other country. Then assuming that the best papers come from Germany, you should consider going to Germany for your PhD because that country has that solid environment for you to grow as a researcher because you also get to interact with researchers locally. Similarly, if you are going for PhD in a certain field, let's say if you want to go for PhD in Sanskrit, of course you should go for PhD in Sanskrit in India because that's the best country to go for your PhD in. However, in most cases, in large number of cases, US PhD degree is highly regarded and the likelihood of you getting solid research experience and knowledge in the US is higher than it is possibly in India. To summarize my answer, it depends on the field in which you are trying to pursue your PhD. But my personal preference among all the countries in the world, not just comparing India, England, Germany, Canada, take all of them out. My favorite country is undoubtedly the United States. I'm also biased because I'm here. Now let us take the second question. How do you compare having a new professor as your dissertation advisor versus old professor? Okay, so I don't think you should look at whether this professor is new or old. That's not what you should look at. Before I answer this question, let me just clarify one important thing. Your PhD experience is greatly a function of your dissertation advisor. Okay. Let's say hypothetically, you get admission from two universities. One university is ranked number four. Another university is ranked number 14. But it is possible that even if you go to university ranked number four, you might not have as good an experience as you could have had had you gone to university number 14, only because possibly the advisor that you could get at university number 14 is actually better. It is possible that although the chances are that you will get a better advisor at university rank number four, but you don't know, right? So for most part, your PhD experience is greatly a function of your dissertation advisor. And that is a very important factor. Now, when it comes to new versus old professor, my take is that it doesn't matter. But I have slight preference for slightly older professors. When I say old, it is more to do with their seniority in the profession because how do you become an older professor? Only because you have had experience of guiding other students before. And not just that, you have had that solid publication experience and you have solid research background. Now it is possible that a new professor is much more energetic and is more productive as compared to an older professor who has not been publishing very well for last five, 10 years. In that case, you should try and see if working with the new professor might be good for you. Again, it depends on the professor's productivity. Second, it depends on professor's experience with research or the passion for research. And third, extremely important point is the professor's personality and your chemistry with that professor. Because I promise you that some people go through hell during PhD programs only because their relationship with their advisors goes really bad. And I have seen people suffer a lot as well. In fact, I know of one girl 
who was at her particular university she had to quit her phd program because how depressed she got because of the behavior of her advisor and remember that she was at a top university so it did not make any difference in fact going to that top university actually hurt her therefore please do not blindly select your advisor please take courses in the beginning and see who you want to go for okay and when you have seen enough professors by going through their doctoral classes you can see which kind of professor you get along well with and then make sure that they are also productive researchers if the professor is very nice to you but it is not doing any good quality work then also it is pointless but overall it matters because keep in mind that in my view finding a dissertation advisor is like getting into an arranged marriage you can either be very lucky or you can be very unlucky but for most people people have decent uh, relationship with their advisors now in my particular case i was the luckiest person in the whole world only because i got the best dissertation advisor in my view anyone could have got and in my particular case even before i started my phd program i knew that i want to be his student and nobody else's student and not just that if not him i will not even go for my phd had my advisor told me that i do not want you to be my student anymore i would have quit my phd program no doubt so let us go for our third question which is internships during phd is it recommended and how many people go for internships so it completely depends on the field in which you are getting your phd in usually phd is a degree where you are trying to become a researcher internships at companies i believe that's what you mean are oriented towards industry and the work that you can do for that company okay these two are not always the same thing except there are some fields in which doing an internship might actually be helpful for your phd program for example if you are in computer science you can go work for google or microsoft if you are in aerospace engineering you can do an internship with spacex or you can go do an internship at nasa and so much and so forth and you can have solid collaboration with such companies and you can actually take your research forward after having those internships at those companies and it is also possible that is in many cases where people actually go and work in that particular company where they had interned while being a phd student but in most fields it is generally actually not recommended at least in my case in information systems had i told my advisor that i want to go for an internship i don't think it would have been appreciated that much because in his view and i agree with his view is that you are getting trained to become a professor at a university this internship will actually take your focus away from your research papers therefore focus on becoming a better scholar rather than working for a company because you have chosen this path of going to academia and doing scientific research question number 4 how to deal with leaving parents and family alone in india while doing a phd in the us okay so <laughs> good question so my response to that is that if you want to grow you have to break the shackles okay a chick inside an egg has to break that egg to come out and experience freedom a chick cannot say that i want to stay inside egg because it is more comfortable growth happens only when you get out of your comfort zone so if living with your parents is your comfort zone then just stay there don't go for phd's okay now if you want to grow then you have to leave to go to a place where you can actually learn and become more independent let's be real your parents are not going to be with you forever and you are going out for a reason you are not going out for some drugs or some bad things you are going out for quality education if for the right reasons if you leave your family behind and pursue knowledge you have to do that if not what is the other option don't grow don't learn just stay back right and that takes us to our next question which is taking care of your mental health during phd how did you navigate through difficult personal situations i don't know why would you assume that uh, i went through difficult personal situations but in my case it is actually very true in fact i went through very uh, how should i say a traumatic event in my personal life during the phd program and it completely shook me up and therefore mental health is very important now how do you handle that situation the point is this the people who have challenges let us divide them on let's say somebody is completely helpless is very poor cannot do anything and they get very depressed 
and the other category are very rich and successful people who have achieved everything there's nothing for them to achieve so they don't know what to do with their time and mind during phd fortunately you are on a mission right what happened in my case in particular was that i was a dirt poor phd student who had just experienced severe traumatic event now what do you do just sit and cry all the time i tried doing that but the point is that it does not help you in any way it is not helping you improve your life in any way so while you are going through that emotional turmoil you need to also know that if you do not do the task at hand it is only going to get worse therefore buckle up pull your socks get into that mode and try and get the work done because in my case i was a very poor doctor student now did i want to live this life forever hell no i wanted to get out of the phd program successfully so that i can have a better life later which i have now so now how did i handle that because you have something to fight for regardless of your mental health whatever situation you are going through you have to give it a fight and how did i handle that let me just try and summarize very briefly my personal inclination was towards the bhagavad gita because i used to go to weekly gita satsang and that was my way of keeping myself sane so now this is my personal take i'm not saying that you should follow exactly my path maybe for you gardening might be something that helps you heal better therefore do not ignore your mental health if the need be go to a counselor seek help that is okay but you have to know that without giving a fight don't go down even if you are going down fight till the end and in my case i was extremely fortunate in a sense that when i went through that traumatic event my dissertation advisor tried to do anything and everything to make sure that i was doing well i was doing okay and how could he help me get through that and actually do well in life and therefore i am very grateful to him and now we come to our last question which is how did you deal with the hard times during your phd hard times specifically mean the extended periods with bad productivity now this is a very key question now if you are not being productive and then if your advisor doesn't stop you right there that means that your advisor does not care about you let me just give you my real experience between the first year end and before the second year started in my phd program there was a period of the summer semester right during that summer semester i did not do any work i was just fooling around watching tv shows and then by the end of the summer i got a phone call from my advisor and he scolded me like hell and i needed that and not just that during my phd program i went through two major failures of dissertation topics before i could actually get a proper topic and data set to work on and i seriously considered quitting many times but i knew that it is easy to quit and what will end up happening maybe i will become an it developer and if i don't go for phd 5 years later the best thing that could happen is that i would get the title of a senior it developer or something like that senior software developer or something like that or maybe at best a manager but having the title of dr chaitanya sambhara was actually very motivating because how many people can earn their doctorate and that was one of my incentives on how to handle such situations now do not expect that you will be productive every single day but you can measure your success on a daily basis okay it is success is not something that happens that today i will go and perform greatly no on each and every single day are you getting something accomplished did you write at least one page of your research paper that day if not one page did you at least go through one paragraph of work for that day if yes then try and do little better the next day and let me share one incident what happened is that when i finished my dissertation i had a deadline by which i should send my dissertation to my dissertation committee right so i came to my office at 8 in the morning that day and then i worked until i finished all that work and i was able to send my paper the next day at 11 o'clock so i worked non stop for 27 hours now when i say non stop 27 hours of course i took breaks to go out and eat and then took a minute or two long walk and what not but i stayed awake all night and after i finished that 27 hour streak i collapsed on the floor of my office and i woke up 4 hours later and then i went home to take shower 
and I still remember how exhausted I was after that 27 hour streak. And I genuinely believe that these are the experiences that make your PhD journey very fulfilling. If you always had good time in your PhD program, it's not really fun, it is kind of boring. So you should go through good and bad times and do not just stick to being a researcher, have fun as well. Because in the PhD programs, a lot of times you get opportunities to go to attend conferences, right? So when I went to conferences in Italy and in New Zealand, I actually made a vacation out of them. So actually I traveled several countries while being a doctoral student in the US. So I hope these answers were helpful in some way. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind and God bless the United States of America.